Um, so as, we, as you jump into the system, um, this is what you'll see. And again, as I was pointing out, um, you know, we, we really have tried to make this um, a, a full service, you know, career development job search tool um, to use throughout, uh, you know, really the life of your career. One of the first things that you might want to do is jump into the where do I start. This is um, an easy exercise that you can um, really go through and it helps you identify what you know and don't know about the career um, process, the job search process, career development. Um, when you take the, um, it's a very quick 20 questions on a sliding scale, and as you rate things from a, a 1 to a 5, it will point you in the right direction as far as um, where to get started you know, in the career development process as well as where to go directly in the system. So if you've rated that, you know, I really don't know much about you know, the assessment tools or I don't know much about social media um, and networking, it's going to point you directly to those tools within the system, and it's going to walk you through step by step in the manner that makes the most sense as far as um, you know, kind of the linear process of career development. So that is a great place to start um, in the system. Again, if you if you're not coming in, you know, for something specific. Some other areas to point out on the home page. Um, one is the job search tool. Um, we have specific jobs and internships that are um, in the system that you can search like you can any other job boards um, and save those searches, apply directly to those positions. Um, listings of different types of positions that are in the, the, um, the types of job functions, marketing, finance, um, whatever the case may be that you specify in your profile. Quick links to resume builders and cover letter builders in the system. And then additional tools, again, that if you're just, you know, you're looking through and just want to get, you know, more familiar with the system, this would be the place to start. Okay. With the um, navigation of the system, um, we, we do it, again, you know, in, in the order that you would typically find the career management and career development process. So starting with a career exploration, if you're not sure what you want to do next, um, you know, how to really start to identify your um, skills, your experience, your personality, and everything that ties together to create a very focused search and move through into the career planning. Um, tools that help you actually get the job, like your um, resumes, cover letters, interview preparation industry information and additional research tools, and then additional account information where you can go in and again manage your profile, manage the jobs that you've saved and different things like that that we'll cover um, in the next 40 minutes or so as well. So starting with the career exploration piece, and just so you know, um, and, and don't get overwhelmed as you enter the system um, for the first time especially, is that there are many, many, many um, different assessment tools, exercises, and things like that that you will have been um, access to. And you don't, not everybody needs to complete every different piece of the um, uh, of the system in order to you know, work through it properly. Some people know when they come in that, hey, I'm just looking for networking information or I want to use the databases to help find target companies, et cetera. Um, and so you know, the ability to move in and out um, you know, at the rate that you would like to is one of the benefits of having a, a self-directed system that points you in the right direction. So in the assessment area, uh, there are some very in-depth assessment tools such as values, temperament, personality, the interests, assessments, et cetera. But then there's also a, a quick profile here that you can complete, which takes 10 minutes or less, and it helps you identify your values, your interests, and your personality assessments, um, which are the three keys to really starting um, a search that is a focused job search. Um, so if you feel like you know, you're a little bit pressed for time and don't have you know, um, enough time to go through each of these individually at this point in time, I highly suggest starting with this quick profile. Because once you start to complete that, you will be able to go in and view your career profile, which is going to start pulling all of these assessment tools together for you and showing you, you know, some direction, different things that you might be interested in as far as um, occupations, different interest areas, things to consider as you're looking for a position, you know, what's the best work environment for you, et cetera. 
So that's all just information from that 10 minute um, quick profile. And then it'll also point out to you, you know, which assessments have you completed so far and which have you not, so that if you do want to go in and take the more in-depth uh, assessment um, tools, then you could, you know, quickly jump right to those. So at any point in time when you want to see the results of those assessments, you just view that um, career profile piece there. Um, the ass assessing yourself, again, it covers values, temperament, personality, interests, skills and talents, so they are pretty in-depth, um, probably between 10 to 12 um, assessments total in those areas. And they will show you again what you've completed, maybe what you've started but not finished yet, et cetera. Also um, in this section here, um, defining your options and preferences. So as you start to figure out focus of your searches, um, you know, identified maybe that finance or marketing or the areas that you're interested in, then it becomes important to really identify well, what industries am I interested in, geographically what locations might I be interested in. Um, very importantly, what's the corporate culture um, that you might be interested in as well. Um, and so you, there's a lot of uh, content and um, information in here about how, do, how does the, the um, type of culture differ between large companies, you know, family-owned companies, nonprofits, um, that sort of thing, to help you really start to identify um, you know, what would the environment be that you might be most comfortable in. Also in the um, work environment section, um, there's an entrepreneurial aptitude um, assessment as well just to help you understand you know, if you're considering going into business for yourself, starting a company, what are some of the key thoughts um, and um, attributes that really help someone succeed in this area, and it gives you assessment feedback on things to consider um, if you are considering that. And then also, um, this section also covers um, leadership style as well in this particular area here too. Sorry. So some of these you'll see um, as you go through, we have some of these different assessment pieces that are located in various areas of the system. And we do that because there's a lot of crossover in um, the information that you're pulling together at various stages um, of the search. So you might be doing a lot of research early on as you try to identify what am I um, really interested in as far as industries, what kind of companies might I be in interested in. But then also later in the search as you're really planning your strategy piece, you will go back to those same tools but use them using them differently to help you identify maybe networking contacts within those organizations and things like that. Um, at the, some of the last um, exercises within the assessment piece is um, the vision statement, creating a vision statement. Um, and really this is just your opportunity to be able to um, think about, you know, again, you know, what do I envision when I think of my short-term and long-term career development and an exercise to help you walk through that and, and take a look to see you know, how do my short-term goals really match up with um, maybe some of my longer-term plans. Also a synthesis um, exercise that helps you pull together um, the assessment results and what those results were for particular exercises and um, you know, really pulling all those result pieces together like you would if you were working, you know, hand in hand with a career coach or a career counselor. Um, that's something that you would, you know, work through that process with. And then also a career decision making matrix. There's obviously a lot of career decisions that need to be made as you are, you know, thinking about your career um, as you're, you know, going through the job search, as you're starting to evaluate different options and offers. And so this is um, really an exercise here to help you start to think about what are um, these, you know, all of this different criteria that I need to really think about to make an, a, you know, a good decision about the next steps in my career path. Once you get through the career exploration piece, then we move into the career planning. And again, this is where you really start to look at um, the ideal work environment, um, really creating a plan, and we say this, um, we as in career counselors and coaches, is that um, you, know, you really have to treat your job search and your career development much like you would 
any other project that you work on, you know, whether it's painting your house or going on vacation, that sort of thing. It takes a lot of planning. You really need to know, you know, here are my goals and, you know, create those steps um, to get there. And so in this career, um, career um, plan section, planning section, it really talks about how to set goals, how to um, get organized in your search, um, you know, creating specific um, manageable um, goals and how to monitor progress in these areas as well. Um, and a lot, that, a lot of, about monitoring progress and goals so that as you start to take a look at your job search and see, you know, I don't feel like I'm getting the results, is it because of lack of time and effort when you really go back in and take a look at how much time you're spending and how many positions you're applying to, or are there other factors there such as the market, the geographic location that you're in, et cetera. So by really diving into this area and creating specific um, goals, a specific strategy, and then taking a look at those objectively and looking at, you know, am I, um, am I really putting as much time into the job search as I think I am? That can really help you to identify um, why there might be a lack of momentum in your job search. Then other areas, as we talked about, the industry, geographic location are also in this section. We also have um, international job search information. So if you are an international student looking for positions here um, in the U.S., or if you are um, a U.S. Uh, student or alumni seeking international opportunities, this is where you could go for that information. Um, you know, the things to think about, the steps that are involved in that process, and then um, different um, types of companies that tend to hire as well um, and sponsor visa um, applications and that sort of thing. And then related to that um, is our government section. Uh, this section, if you are interested in any type of government um, position, um, this really dives into what are the differences between the application process, um, the resume, um, traditional resume versus a government resume, what are KSAs and how to um, complete those in the government application process, um, difference in interviewing um, for those types of positions. And then we also have a section on military transition. So if you are transitioning military, this has a lot of good information on how to um, really start to talk about your skills in a way that is, um, is not um, kind of full of the jargon um, and language from um, military, but something that um, somebody in you know, a corporate environment would begin to understand that as well. And um, the next section in the career planning is networking for your career. Um, I'm sure you've heard this if you've you know, been on any type of career site, but networking is you know, by far the most effective means of landing um, a position. And so we, we really have a lot of information in here on the differences between um, you know, the, the open market versus the hidden, quote unquote, hidden market. So um, positions that are posted out there, um, you know, on job boards and, and um, you know, in the paper and other places that you might see positions versus the um, hidden job market, which is really those that you're identifying through um, the networking process. So a lot of um, exercises, a lot of information in here about how to tap into your network um, in order to begin to identify these, you know, quote unquote, hidden market positions so that you're putting yourself um, out there against less competition than you would find, you know, um, on the job boards as well. There are exercises on creating your network, um, how to create your network, what your networking preferences are. Um, I think it's very important. A lot of people have um, kind of a, um, a, whether it be a fear of or a dislike for the networking process. Um, and so this really helps you start to identify, you know, what is my networking preference, um, you know, especially as you go through some of the personality assessments like introvert, extrovert, and, um, and begin to identify those personality preferences. Um, that can help you determine what the more effective ways of 
networking would be for your specific um, personality type as well. Okay. And then exercises on how to create your network. If you're thinking about, um, you know, I don't really know that many people or that sort of thing, um, this um, section here will help you really begin to think about who could I include in my network. And obviously your alumni association is, could play a huge piece um, in that um, role as well for networking. So lots of, of good information as well as exercises in the networking section there. Um, and also how to use social media in your networking as well. And we really focus on um, the three main platforms um, currently like LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And the more, most effective ways of using them in your job search and for networking. Um, also kind of just like little tips on how to build profiles um, in those platforms, how to you know, under, come to understand you know, what some of the language is um, for some of that, like you know, a, a connection versus a friend um, versus following somebody on Twitter and that sort of thing. So kind of giving you um, some tips on the different languages as well if you're not familiar with those. Okay. And then um, the last piece of the career planning is really looking at managing your career um, and thinking about it in a way that um, not necessarily in your job search right now, but what are some other options as you start to look down the road and developing your career plan? Um, I think most of us probably tend to think um, upwards, um, up the ladder. And um, this, you know, kind of the information here and the tools here are designed to help you start thinking about, you know, what are some other options if I want to, um, you know, develop professionally, how can I do that by maybe working cross-functionally, um, working with mentors, um, you know, I, not necessarily always going up in the same um, niche, um, either industry or job function that I'm in now, um, but, you know, expanding your skill set and doing more um, you know, lateral moves or whatever the case may be. So different exercises, and you'll see throughout the system that we usually list the exercises that are relevant to this particular section as well as related exercises in this right-hand um, menu area as well so that you can always um, easily identify where the exercises are throughout the system. So that is career planning. The next, which is where most people tend to want to jump first, is in the getting the job section. So this is really looking at all of those different pieces that need to come together in order for you to effectively communicate the type of position you're looking for, the value that you add, the skills that you bring, the education that you have, that sort of thing. Um, there is um, information on developing your pitch or otherwise known as your elevator speech or your positioning statement um, with again exercises that walk you through um, you know what should be in your positioning statement links back to the skills um, and strengths assessments um, so that if you haven't done those that's a very important piece of developing your pitch and then obviously linking back to networking tools too because that's what you're going to be using your pitch for a lot is when you're networking. Um, so this will walk you through um, you know, that process and, and again very, in a very step-by-step -step manner. The next section is resumes. We have several uh, resume builders and many, many um, resume examples in our resume library. You'll be able to pull different resume samples if you'd like um, just to kind of help you um, with language, wording, format, that sort of thing. And then you can choose if you want just a straight chronological resume, it will just pull up a, a builder. Or if you want more of a custom resume, depending on the type of position that you're looking for, you can go into the custom resume builder and you can um, pull up a, the type of resume that you're interested in. It will pull up the different sections. You can you know, move this information around depending on you know, um, the order that you want your information in, and then simply create the resume that way. 
and this will pull up um, the, the template basically that you go in. You can edit any of these sections here, fill that in. Every resume is auto-saved so that you don't lose it. You can go back in and rename that to something that's easier to remember. Um, but, and then you can also download any resume that you create into a Word format, a PDF format, or a scannable text format as well. Any of these different sections here, if you want to pull them out, you simply can remove that section. Um, and then once you download it you know, into the Word format, obviously you can do further tweaking and editing to it as far as um, um, the, you know, the format goes and font and that sort of thing. So we do have a lot of different um, resume types um, in here, you know, again, based on uh, the profession. We also have a cover letter builder. So that seems to be something that people tend to struggle with quite a bit is their cover letter and just you know, creating kind of a template that will help them um, you know, to easily you know, get through that process of having to update their cover letter for each and every position that goes out. So with the cover letter builder, um, you can go through, again, you can see lots of examples um, in the system, and then customize your specific um, cover letter at, with a guide on you know, paragraph by paragraph what type of information should I put into this cover letter here, and then also save it, download it um, as well. Interview preparation. Um, this section really covers many areas of the interview prep. So, from looking at and really starting with the employer perspective, you know, why do they ask the types of questions? What are they trying to assess um, by, um, you know, asking certain questions? Um, you know, what are they looking for, and how can I most effectively answer those questions? Um, to actual sample questions. Um, that you might be asked along the way. So some general tips on using stories um, to answer your interview questions, um, and then common interview questions that you might get with tips on how to prepare for those. And then also there's different sections in here like getting asked negative interview questions, behavioral interview questions, and then that relates specifically to um, types of questions, so management style, um, behavioral there, um, and then technology, healthcare, and a few other um, functional areas there as well. There's also a community area in here. So if you want to share um, among um, your alumni group, um, questions that you've been asked by local empl um, employers, or um, if you've got questions that you are struggling um, on how to answer, you can either share a question that you've been asked, or you can submit a question that you would like help and get feedback on. Um, so that's in the community questions section as well. We also have in this section, we have um, these uh, actual interview video um, clips. So just little um, video clips. You, uh, I think most of them are under a minute and a half, two minutes definitely, um, but with samples of how to effectively answer um, questions in these um, areas. So tell me, the tell me about yourself question, weakness questions, et cetera, in this area. Now I think the most fun part of the interview um, prep section is you get to actually record a practice interview if you would like. Um, this section here, and I highly recommend it, especially if you have not um, been doing a lot of interviewing or much interviewing at all, um, or if it's been a long time, that even if you record this just for yourself, that you do that so that you get very used to um, responding to these types of questions and that you can see, you know, what is my demeanor like? What's my eye contact like? Um, you know, am I um, maybe, you know, not making good eye contact during the uh, interview process, that sort of thing. But you can go into this section. You can select how many questions you would like to be asked. You can select the type. So behavioral questions would be a good one. Um, and then 
you can select or you can name the interview, and then it's going to prompt you to um, set up your webcam. And then it's going to actually have somebody here, an HR professional, asking you a question, asking you the question, which you can then record your response to. And you can save those responses. You can um, save them in the system. If you can email them to somebody that you would like to have them review. If you are um, working with a mentor or someone, um, then you could um, allow them to view these as well. Okay. So that is interview preparation. Um, next in the section is follow-up. And this includes any thank you letters, um, references, and how to work with your references, how to prepare your references, how to um, create your reference letter sheet uh, with examples again of, of both. Um, and there is also a thank you letter builder and a reference sheet builder that operates you know, just like the resume and cover letter builders as well too. And then also in this section, um, which is you know, an area that, that many people um, kind of struggle with, get nervous about, is the actual, hey, they, I've, I've gotten an offer, now how do I negotiate this thing? So a lot of tips, guidelines, um, tools for researching salaries, things like that in this negotiation section so that you're prepared um, to negotiate the best offer. And then the last section in getting the job is the actual job posting section. So this is where you would come if you just wanted to start taking a look at you know, different job board or job postings. These postings um, come from a variety of um, sources. We are a sister company with Tweet My Jobs, if you're familiar with them, and we work with hundreds of um, employers. Um, throughout you know, the United States, and we um, post those positions in here. Uh, and then we also have um, um, other you know, job boards, things like that, that we partner with as well, as well as adding individual um, um, or specific postings that come from, you know, whether it be your alumni association or employers that want to work um, and post positions for um, the um, alumni group there, those would be in here as well. When you do a job search, um, and you can go in, you can, you know, just like any keyword um, and location search, you can go in, get your results. Um, and I find myself, you know, all the time if I'm looking at different position postings and things like that, um, that you know, I look at them and th but don't have time to properly review them at that point in time. So if you're doing the search um, and you pull up a list of, you know, uh, positions that, hey, these look like good positions, but gosh, I've got to run to class or you know, I'm due at work or whatever the case may be, you can just merely click on the green button and save them into your job section and come back to them later. Your jobs will be um, saved up in here. Um, and then that way when you come back, um, you know, you'll be able to see that specific position. Um, a lot of these, as you, you know, click on them, they will take you to whatever the source is. So here again, tweet my jobs, um, and then you would be able to apply directly from that position or from that posting. Um, one other area that I want to point out in the job postings area, you will see Twitter channels. And if you're familiar with Tweet My Jobs, and if you're familiar with Twitter and the Twitter feed, if you are interested in following any of these job boards um, posted on Twitter, you would be able to go directly to this feed. So this is a, um, obviously Chicago positions that are finance related jobs. And these, if you start to follow this, um, will start turning up in your, um, your Twitter feed. Okay. So moving on into more of the research tools, um, we've got a couple different areas. One is the industry focus. Um, this section is um, industries that tend to be 
more um, encompassing of what undergrads tend to go into as far as industries. There's a couple more we'll be adding in here, um, business and then energy as well. Um, but these are, tend to be the industries that if, you know, as a new grad or somebody graduating soon, or if you're, con you know, contemplating a career change at this point, um, that would be, you know, this would be a good area to come into and just really kind of explore um, that, you know, these particular industries here. Um, we have this tied into the database so that if you are, you know, exploring these different majors that you can then search and find companies that might be interested in, in um, individuals with those majors. Um, you can search for jobs and internships here. News and hot topics um, for that particular industry. And then additional resources that you might tap into as far as, you know, the industry, how they break out into different sub-industries, et cetera. Um, and then there's also, in, in the jobs um, section here, there's also different um, job boards and Twitter channels that are directly tied into these particular areas as well. So that's the industry focus. Now, if you're, you know, if, if none of those industries are things that um, really pique your interest, then you can go into the industry reports, and this is a tool that has over 700 industry subsectors. So you can either do a search for a particular industry that you're interested in, or you can just browse all of the um, different industries and you know take a look at the type of information um, that's in here. Select one here. All of these are laid out in the same way. They all have the same type of information. So these different chapter areas, an overview, recent developments, etc. They are all updated quarterly. It will give you the date it was um, updated here. Um, a couple of my favorite areas, I guess, of this particular database, and and especially um, in working with um, students and alumni that are. Um, either researching and doing networking and informational interviewing or preparing for interviews. Um, a couple areas that I think are really vital, um, one is the business challenges section because you know as you, you know, as you're preparing for interviews that you want to be able to know what is the challenge of this particular industry, what skills do I bring or what experience could I potentially bring to this company um, that would you know, really speak to and help in these areas where they're really feeling a crunch. Okay. The other um, area that I like a lot in this, call, or in this um, industry uh, database is the call prep questions. This is basically um, kind of like a little cheat sheet of the types of questions that you might ask um, you know, when you're interacting with somebody in this industry. So if it's an industry especially that you don't have a lot of experience with or really don't know much about, um, I highly recommend coming to the industry database and um, getting more familiar, looking at these call prep questions, jotting down some of these questions so that you can ask whether it be in a networking situation or in an interview situation. Um, is it points out, you know, what, what is the question and what's the relevance of this question? Um, you know, why, why, was, why is this important information? And then you can also link to additional resources if you want to explore even further. This will um, link you to additional resources um, that might be helpful, you know, in your exploration of that particular industry as well. It also will give you related industries here. Another section um, of this database that I think is very helpful, especially if you're considering relocation, is you can take a look at the states and provinces. Let's say maybe that you are interested in moving to the Midwest. Um, you can get a lot of good information on what is job, um, the job um, market like, what's unemployment rates, um, very good information on which types of, um, you know, how the different cities are doing, as well as which types of industries are, you know, doing well or not so well in those states. And then also information um, as it relates to real estate market and that sort of thing. So again, this is a really good tool if you are looking for relocation information, um, links to different business journals and state um, and um, government information there as well. 
Um, other research tools, and actually that, that industry reports, you can access both from the industry database or the industry focus or from the research tools as well. So you'll be able to find it easily in either one. Once you start moving into more of the str strategic search piece, um, then you uh, would want to be using the databases here to really go in and start identifying target organizations and um, different potential contacts as well. So you might go in um, you know, to the database and maybe you're interested in, let's say, financial services um, companies. So you would you know, click the different um, industries that you're interested in. You can um, limit the information by size, by the number of employers, et cetera. You can limit by geographic location. You want to go in, you can either do all of Florida or you can limit it to whatever cities and it does break it down specifically in some of the larger cities. And then you can get your results. Um, and really this information is helpful again from, from um, in two ways. One again is if you're starting to um, do research about the types of companies that you're interested in, that sort of thing as far as your search goes. The other is if you, you know, have a company that maybe you've got an interview lined up with, then um, you can come in, take a look at this information and um, find you know, additional resources and information about that company as well. Um, once you have the information here, um, when you click on the company information, again, you'll see this little green button where if this is a company that you're interested in, you can save it to your company information um, for later so that you don't have to recreate the search. Um, for all of the different profiles that you see for these companies, you're going to see this Who button. If you're a Facebook user, Who is an app that you can get on Facebook. Um, so that um, you can utilize your Facebook connections in the same way that you might your LinkedIn connections. Okay. And then these are different contacts that are at that company. Again, you can add them into your contacts if there's somebody you think you, know, you might want to reach out to. And then you see the little in here. If you have a LinkedIn account, then you can also use this Click on that and it will pull up the number of contacts you have or you can start to follow the company directly. The first time you do that, um, you will need to sign in to your LinkedIn account um, if you haven't done that recently, just so you know. Right. So that is one of the research tools. That's actually the company, um, the U.S. company research tool. We also have um, our, what's called our worldwide company. Um, research database, and this actually covers the U.S. as well as international as well. Um, and it operates in pretty much the same way. You can, you know, look up a company name. You can look at their, um, you know, hone in on their geographic, their company size, the um, industry as well. So, um, and it will produce similar results that you can then, you know, utilize the same information or the information in the same way for your um, search strategy. There's also a people search and an alumni search. They operate similarly. Um, if you're looking, for, again, for networking contacts, you would be able to come into the people search and you know, either identify, you know, I'm looking for HR or I'm looking for maybe a, a COO or whatever the case may be, um, plug in information and get results there. Um, and then there's also an alumni search as well. So you could come into this and <clears throat> start to look for maybe some alumni. And once you get results from this, then if you thought, okay, there's 374 alumni that are in this database and the information that they pull it from is from the biographical keyword information that's in the databases. Um, but if you wanted to limit this, you could you know, limit it by, okay, I only want to look at those in finance roles or I only want to look for those in Florida or Chicago or wherever the case may be. 
Um, so you could take a look at these. You could you know, then look um, at the specific information about that contact. And again, you could save that to <clears throat> your, um, your, uh, either your company and contact information as well. Then you can email them, schedule a phone you know, conversation, and give them that pitch that you've been working on so hard. Okay. Um, some other research tools here, um, top-rated cities. You can pull um, pretty much any um, major geographic or um, any um, major city and really get a very in-depth, most of the ones that I've seen have been anywhere from like 20 to 30 pages um, you know, on specific cities. Again, if you're considering relocation, that's a fantastic tool. Um, as well as nations of the world, you can select um, pretty much, I think, any, any country out there um, and it will give you the same type of information about um, you know, things that would be important to you if you were looking for um, opportunities there. Um, we do have salary, a salary wizard, as well as salary information and resources in the negotiation section. Um, this business information resources, I think, again, is very important as you're starting to explore different um, industries, as well as taking a look at what are some potential networking opportunities. So maybe if you were looking um, for different associations that you could get involved in, um, and banking, you know, you could take a look at different banking associations, um, get links directly to those contact information, and then also um, explore, you know, what are some trade journals and different websites, directories, databases. So all of that you'd be able to pull from this business information resources section. Um, again, the, the link to the industry reports, which we took a look at. And here's something, um, if you are, let's say maybe you heard about or there's a company that you've just kind of heard about in passing and are having um, problems really either finding it in our database, maybe it's a very small company, new company, um, we have a research on demand function so that if you um, don't find what you're looking for in the database, you can come into this research on demand. Um, put as much information, maybe you saw an article about them on the news or um, in the newspaper or something like that, um, but give us as much information as you can and we will um, have our researchers take a look and um, then get back with you with any additional information that we have found about the company. And then the last section in the research tools is the e-library. <coughs> In this particular section, you will find just about anything and everything as it relates to industries, job search, career development, specific types of positions, um, everything you could possibly imagine um, you could find in here. So if you are, for example, maybe looking um, at um, banking industry, again, you know, come in here, you find banking, and what this resource does is it will point, um, point you towards many, many, many different additional resources that are out there. And I think what is very helpful about this tool is that it will give you a description, and if it's a site, maybe say like the ladders or something like that that charges a fee, it will give you some pretty good feedback on this is worth the money or no, this is really isn't worth the money. You can, you know, a lot of other resources where you can get the same information for free. Um, so the e-library I think does an excellent job of um, providing you with some um, very good research without having to, you know, kind of um, go through all of the information that you would find doing, you know, like a Google search or something. So the last areas that I'll show you are under the account section. Um, you probably noticed throughout that there were different um, job feeds running um, throughout on the home page and then in some of the resume section, et cetera. Um, in the account section, this is where you would go to um, create your user profile. Um, you can select if you're you know, undergrad, graduate, et cetera, if you're looking for internships or permanent positions, and then you can put in you know, specifically the types of target positions that you're interested in. You can create a job alert, and what that will do is anytime a new position um, 
comes into the system that matches your criteria, then it would um, create a job alert. And then when you would sign in next time, you would see, like it might say, you know, 15 messages or something up here. Those would be where you would retrieve your job alerts. So it would, it would notify you that you've got new job alerts there. Okay. My document section is where you will go to um, really take a look at everything that you've done in the system. So if you've created any um, practice interviews, you would find them here. If you, um, you can access your career profile, any plans that you've created, any resumes that you have built um, in the system. You can also upload your resumes into the system as well. And then it's also where you'll find a complete list of all of the exercises, what you've completed, and what you have not completed or might be in progress at this point with um, a quick link to those. Um, this my jobs, my campaigns, my company, and my contacts. These are all the areas that as we've gone throughout, and you've seen me click on that little green button, um, this is where it saves that information. Okay. You can create campaigns if you would like, maybe a couple of these. Let's say you were wanting to create, um, these are for networking. And you can create this type of campaign. You can then create a resume and a cover letter specific to that as well. So you can manage your job search and you know, all of your contacts, all of your positions in that way. Okay. Um, same with your jobs, any of the jobs that you've saved. As long as they are still active, um, if they've been pulled out of the system by the time you get back to them, then it will take you to um, a dead link or it will say inactive here. Um, but as long as they're still active links, then you would be able to access those again and review them and apply for them. And you can also create campaigns around those as well. Um, my calendar, if you, you know, are looking for a calendaring system where you can track your follow-up, things like that, you can access that information here and set up um, follow-up with your contacts, et cetera. Um, your job alerts and your news alerts are going to be found in this section. And you'll see this is what I just created. You can also create new ones in this section as well. Um, any saved searches that you've done, you can access those. So if you've gone into those research databases and you've done a search and you, you know, had a, a, a list of 200 companies, you can save that and re-access that here in the Save Search section so you don't have to recreate that search again. And then um, anything that you have um, as far as news alerts too. So if you went into the industry focus areas, created news alerts, those would be accessible here. And then my account settings, that's just where you go in and change your password, update contact information, that sort of thing as well. We do have different help um, tutorials, um, FAQs, uh, um, you know, if you have any problems at all as you're in the system, um, you can contact our support at CareerBeam or this number here. Uh, we've got some little cheat sheets. Um, as well as we're starting to get um, different overviews in the system and little webinars and tutorials as well. So all of that is what you will have access to um, as an alumni member of your program. I know that's a lot of information and I talked for a really long time. So any questions or anything that I did not cover that you have questions about or I can Krista, how can um, it looks like from the chat that a couple people are having trouble establishing uh, their accounts through CareerBeam? Can you? Okay. How can they get that support information? Yeah, um, if if they um, went either depending on, um, you can always email support at careerbeam.com, mm -hmm. and we can help them um, help them get set up. Mm -hmm. That's probably the easiest. Okay. Easiest way, yeah. Just support at CareerBeam. <laughs> so, and anytime they try to register, and if they get an error, then they'll see that you know if you're having problems, contact um, support at CareerBeam.com. Okay. Chris, I have a question. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I've had my resume done by a gazillion people. 
um, as probably many of the people that are participating in this webinar. And we've gotten to the point now when we respond, when I respond to um, positions that are advertised, they keep telling me to decrease my educational um, identities. For example, if I have a master's or a doctorate, um, leave those off and just put your your master's and your baccalaureate. What is your opinion on that? I think if there is an overwhelming amount of educational experience and a lot of it or some of it is not relevant to the position that you're applying to, then you can leave off the things that are not relevant. You, you know, one of the main goals, and actually I just read an article yesterday about um, recruiters and hiring managers and the fact that um, they really take about six seconds as a first swipe at your resume. And if it's overwhelming, if it's not clean, um, you know, and a nice clean format that's easy to read, if there's too much um, extraneous information on there, it will definitely not get a closer look. So if you really so think you about your resume, to minimize your, so, yeah, don't, so you can, it's okay to minimize your education to make absolutely. you appear as you have less educated? Right. You, your, um, and it's not necessarily that you're trying to make yourself look less educated. You're trying. This is a marketing piece. You want them to identify you as a person that is um, a good fit for that particular position or that particular company. So that's the opportunity. It's just like it, it's it's not your history, and it doesn't need to have include um, you know every position that you've held or every college that you went to. It needs to be the most relevant information in order for them to identify you as someone who would be a great fit for that particular position. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Chris, I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, what, what do you do in a situation where you're applying to one specific company, say Moffitt, you know, and there are so many diverse opportunities there and you, you're qualified for each one? Do you recommend that we change the, the resume to obviously fit each one? And, and if that's the case, is human resources or whatever the recruiter is that's looking at this influx of your um, resumes coming through and you're ch you know, changing and hitting highlights on each specific mm -hmm. position that you apply for, is that looked down upon or is that? Generally not. I mean, I, they're, they're, most often the internal recruiters and HR professionals are used to, um, you know, especially, and, and it's also common that maybe you apply for one position but they think you're a better fit for something else. And, right. And, so, but often it's not the same HR professionals or recruiters internally that are handling the same positions. So they might not even know that you've applied for four other okay. positions internally. Okay. Um, it just depends on you know how large the company is, who's handling it. But you know if, if you go in and tweak, and if you've got the relevant skills, you know sometimes if you're looking for say a marketing position, but then you're also looking for a finance position. They're going to think, mm, I don't know that this person knows exactly what they want to be when they grow up, you know, because it's such a vast difference. But if right. it's, you know, a marketing analyst versus a, you know, something else that's somewhat similar and in the same type of, you know, function and using similar skill sets, then right. Um, well, it's you know, funny that you would use it. those okay. two positions because <laughs> I came from a medical marketing job 15 years ago, went into the mortgage business. Well, you know where that is today. Yes. <laughs> so I'm trying to get back into into medical you know, the medical arena somewhere. So to, mm -hmm. to, you know, to try to offset, you know, that I, I still have 10 years medical experience, but my last 15 have been in, you know, in the marketing on a, on a diverse scale compared to <laughs> medicine. Yeah. It's you know, a cruel joke, I think. He took me out of medicine and put me in money, but, you yeah. know, now I'm going back. But yeah, I'm and sometimes, that honestly, that's a tricky step. What, what I would recommend doing is trying to find an internal contact there that, you know, possibly somebody in HR and in recruiting because often if you can explain here's my situation, here's my skills, um, then you've got somewhat, you know, somebody on the inside that can also give you a little more information about how right. they would approach it. Um, uh -huh. And so using, you know, using LinkedIn, using your alumni association, try to find a contact like that and just uh -huh. reach out, you know, um, sometimes they're overwhelmed and you may not hear back, but others are, you know, very willing 
um, to help and assist in, you know. Right. Well, and I know, too, when they get to a situation where they have 600 applications or 600 resumes coming in for a job, you know, how do you even, you know, let yours float to the top? You know, it's it's very difficult. So Through the networking process. You're welcome. Any other questions I can answer today? Is there um, a way yes. to back and start, I'm sorry, is there a way to go back and start this webinar totally over? I jumped in at the very last few minutes. Is there a way to go back? Is it re recorded? Or it should be recording. Um, okay. And so, yes, yeah, fingers crossed that okay. that works as it should. Um, and if so, and just log then back in the that. same way then? Um, there will be um, some different access information that I will get to the Alumni Association for you. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. What's what's the percentage of um, resumes that are being uh, fed into scanners and identifying keywords? I don't know what the exact you know percentage is, but I can tell you that most, um, almost all large companies and more and more medium companies do it that way. And even recruiting firms, I I know even when I was recruiting you know 12 years ago we were already using that method um, where we wouldn't even really see a lot of resumes unless they pulled up keyword, you know, in the keyword searches. So it's definitely So you, you definitely recommend the common. hidden keywords? You recommend the hidden keywords at the top or at the bottom? Well, um, typically at the bottom if you're going to add additional keywords in there that are not um, captured elsewhere in your resume, and then I would also really recommend that you know, for each position that you apply to that you break out the highlighter and try to really get the gist. It might be that it's worded differently on your resume. Try to word it more similarly to how they have it in the position posting. Yes, I have a question. Um, I'm graduating this May, uh, and I'm pretty new with the career uh, tools uh, searching. So um, what is the difference between the Career Center and the Career Bean? It, do you think that it's better if I keep the Career Bean instead of the other one? Well, yeah, the, the difference, um, and, and very often we work hand in hand with Career Centers. So one of the main differences is most likely your Career Center is not open 24-7. And if it's midnight and you're trying to prep for an interview tomorrow morning, you're probably not going to be able to, you know, get, um, you know, kind of the hand holding. Whereas you can go log into your CareerBeam account and access, you know, all of the information that I showed you and um, everything that's on the site in order to have the ability to, you know, prepare, you know, for the interview or whatever it is that you have coming up. Okay. Does the same uh, uh, opinion applies to the Career Center here at USF? If you have access, yeah, depending on if you have access to the Career Center after graduation, absolutely. I mean, I think that any, any resources that you can tap into as a new grad, um, you know, again, for whether it be for, you know, the advice to have your resume reviewed, um, for networking, um, you should absolutely be taking advantage of it. It's a tough, you know, okay. it's a tough market out there. Um, and, you know, any, anything that you can do to have a leg up, you know, on the competition, you know, to set yourself apart and really start to think about, you know, what are my skills and where do I add value, whether that's through Career Beam, Career Center, the Alumni Association, I highly recommend tapping into all of those tools. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you recommend that um, under associations you put down the alumni associations you're affiliated with? I would, yeah. I would because you never know um, when somebody that is viewing your resume, now of course it might come back, you know, that they go to a, you know, a competitor school, but, you know, in that instance, you know, and I can say that because I go to Ohio State and, of course, we're arch rivals with um, Michigan. Um, so if something like that you know, in those cases, but it can definitely be um, a factor that if somebody else is either, um, you know, knows about the program, about the school, um, you know, is a member of the Alumni Association themselves, uh, that could be very helpful in getting you noticed. Would you suggest any? on a resume putting volunteer, any of your volunteer um, you can, yes, absolutely. And again, if you think about how relevant is this to my search, um, 
you know, if it is especially a program that's well recognized within the community, if it's um, some way that you have gained additional experience that you haven't gotten through um, your, your um, you know, professional right. experience, then absolutely. Okay. Well, you guys have been a great group. I apologize for the little technical blip there at the beginning. Um, but, you know, again, I just, I'm just excited that um, you'll be able to go in, use the Career Beam service as a member of the Alumni Association, and um, we hope to see you in there and using all the tools that you have access to. Thank you for remember, support you. At, you're welcome. You're welcome. Support at CareerBeam.com if you have any problems at all. Okay. Thanks, Krista. Thanks. Krista. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.